Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to discuss about Pope Koyanagi Harada that is VKH disease. VKH disease is a multi-system inflammatory disease affecting eyes that is there will be bilateral granulomatous fan uveitis in VKH disease. It also affects ears, brain, skin and hair. It is thought to be a T-cell mediated autoimmune disease directed against melanocyte antigens. It is more common in darker skin races including Asians, Native Americans, Hispanics and those from Middle and Far East. It is more common in women in their third and fourth decades. However, it can affect both sexes at any age. It is associated with HLA-DR4, notably HLA-DR-P1-0405 which recognizes various melanocyte proteins. It may arise after cutaneous injury, presumably via liberation of melanocyte antigens. Now let us discuss the stages of VKH disease. There are four stages. They are proromal stage, uveitic stage, chronic stage and chronic recurrent stage. Now let us discuss the clinical features of VKH disease. In the prodromal stage, there will be prodrome of fever, meningism and auditory symptoms for a few days before blurring or profound visual loss from UV itis develops. Let us discuss the clinical features of anterior UV itis in VKH disease. There will be bilateral granulomatous anterior UV itis during the UVitic stage. This picture shows keratic precipitates seen in a case of VKH disease. There can be posterior synecae, iris nodules and AC shallowing. Coming to the signs of posterior UV itis in VKH disease, there can be multifocal choroiditis and multifocal detachment of serous retina and exudative retinal detachment. This picture shows the serous retinal detachment seen in a case of VKH disease. Other signs of posterior uveitis in VKH disease include choroidal depigmentation that is sunset glow fundus in chronic stage. There can also be Dallin-Fuchs nodules that is peripheral yellow white choroidal granulomas and subretinal fibrosis. The complications of VKH disease include cataract, glaucoma and CNV membrane. Now let us discuss the systemic features of VKH disease. Cutaneous features or late features. These include vitiligo, alopecia and polyosis. Auditory features include tinnitus, deafness and vertigo. Neurological features include sterile meningitis that is there will be headache and neck stiffness. Features of encephalitis like convulsions and altered consciousness. There can be cranial neuropathies including ocular motility disturbance. Now let us discuss the investigations done in a case of VKH disease. OCT can be done to monitor extent and height of serous detachments. Fundus fluorescent angiography when done will reveal focal areas of delay in choroidal perfusion. There can be multifocal areas of pinpoint leakage as you can see in this image. There can be large placoid areas of hyperfluorescence, pooling within subretinal fluid and optic nerve staining. Ultrasonography when done will show low to medium reflective diffuse choroidal thickening. Lumbar puncture is not always required. However, when it is done, it will show lymphocytic pleocytosis. Now let us discuss the treatment of VKH disease. We have to coordinate with general physician. In acute phase, we have to give IV high-dose corticosteroids in the form of IVMP 1 gram or IV dexamethasone 100 mg over 1 hour after excluding systemic infection and contraindications for 3 days. This is followed by high dose oral steroids to be tapered very slowly. There should be prompt use of systemic corticosteroids administered orally at a dose of 1 to 1.5 mg per kilogram per day for a minimum of 6 months. For a resistant or a recurrent disease, we have to add corticosteroid sparing agents that is immunosuppressants like methotrexate, azathioprine, mycophenidate mofetil, tacrolimus, cyclosporin and rituximab. These images show bilateral serous retinal detachment in a 40 year old female patient with VKH disease. This is one month after treatment with high dose prednisone and azathioprine. If you notice the serous detachment as resolved in both eyes. Now let us discuss the revised diagnostic criteria for VKH disease according to the American UVHS Society criteria. The first criteria is no history of penetrating ocular trauma or surgery preceding initial onset of UVHS. The second criteria is no clinical or laboratory evidence suggestive of other ocular disease entities. The third criteria is bilateral ocular involvement. Early features include diffuse choroiditis. 
if fundus findings are equivocal then there must be characteristic ffa findings and diffuse choroidal thickening the late ocular involvement features include history suggestive of prior absence of early features and two or more of ocular depigmentation that is sunset glow fundus or sugira sign which is perilimbal vitiligo neumular chorioretinal depigmented scars rpe clumping or migration and recurrent or chronic anterior evitus the fourth criteria is neurological or auditory findings these include meningismus like malaise fever headache nausea abdominal pain neck or back stiffness tinnitus and csf pleocytosis the fifth criteria is integumentary findings not preceding ocular or cns disease like alopecia polyosis and vitiligo complete vkh requires all criteria to be fulfilled incomplete vkh requires criteria 1 to 3 and either 4 or 5 and probable vkh that is isolated ocular disease requires criteria 1 to 3 if you have any suggestions please let me know in the comment section for more such videos please check out my playlists thank you